Whether we may or may not realize it, we encounter it every day. It affects roads, power lines, railroad tracks, bodies of water, and is applied to many practical things as well, including in the lifting of a hot air balloon, and even proves useful for the opening of a tight jar. So what is this phenomena? It's called thermal expansion. Thermal expansion refers to the physical alteration of matter due to a change in temperature through heat transfer. Imagine that these are molecules in a body of matter. When heat is applied, the thermal energy of the matter increases, causing its kinetic energy to increase. As a result, the molecules travel faster, therefore farther apart from each other, initiating the matter's expansion. Linear thermal expansion is marked by the increase in one dimension of a solid due to an increase in temperature. This is represented in the equation delta L, or the change in length of an object, is equal to alpha, the coefficient of linear expansion that depends on the nature of the material, times L initial, the initial length of the object, times delta T, the change in temperature. The units of measurement used in this equation consist of lengths in meters, coefficient of linear expansion in 1 over degrees Celsius, and temperature in degrees Celsius. The application of linear thermal expansion can be represented by the expansion joints on bridges and on the lines of the sidewalk, which provide adequate space for matter to stretch under the exposure of heat. So now that we know the basics, let's dig in a little deeper. At what temperature will a 1 meter and a 0.7 meter concrete slab, a hundredth of a meter away from each other, begin to buckle, assuming that their initial temperature is at 21 degrees Celsius? Well first, let's look at what would happen when they would buckle. The total change in length of both slabs would equal the length of the gap being closed, which is a hundredth of a meter. Therefore, Delta L of the 1 meter slab plus delta L of the 0.7 meter slab would equal 0.01 meters. Using the equation for linear thermal expansion, this can be represented as alpha C, the coefficient of linear expansion of concrete, times the initial length of the 1 meter slab, times the change in temperature, or the final temperature post expansion minus the initial temperature, plus alpha C times the initial length of the 0.7 meter slab times the change in temperature. After substituting the values for alpha C, 12 times 10 to the negative 6th power inverse of degrees in Celsius, the initial length of each of the slabs, 1 meter and 0.7 meters, and the initial temperature, 21 degrees Celsius, we simply solve for Tf and get approximately 511 degrees Celsius. Volume thermal expansion is characterized by the increase in the volume of a solid, liquid, or gas due to an increase in temperature. The equation for volume thermal expansion is almost identical to the equation of linear thermal expansion. The change in volume, delta V, is equal to the coefficient of volume expansion, beta, times the initial volume, times the change in temperature, delta T. The units of measurement used in this equation consist of volume in meters cubed, beta in the inverse of degrees in Celsius, and temperature in degrees Celsius. Some important things to note regarding this concept include, matter expands more in volume thermal expansion than it would in linear thermal expansion because it is enlarged in three dimensions rather than in one. Liquids expand more than solids for the reason that their bonds require less energy to be broken in order to enlarge. If a hole exists within a solid, it maximizes under thermal expansion along with the rest of the object. A 0.02 cubic meter steel jerry can contains 0.005 meters of gasoline. Assuming that it is 21 degrees Celsius, at what temperature will the jerry can just begin to overflow? 
When the jerry can starts to overflow, the final volume of the gasoline will be equal to the final volume of the jerry can. This is represented by the initial volume of the jerry can and the gasoline, plus the change in volume. Using the equation of volume thermal expansion, we can expand delta V for both the jerry can and the gasoline into the coefficient of volume expansion times the initial length times delta T for the final temperature minus the initial temperature. Then, we can substitute the values for all of these variables. Starting off with the jerry can, we know that its initial volume is 0.02 cubic meters. The coefficient of volume expansion would be that of steel, 36 times 10 to the negative 6 inverse of degrees in Celsius, and the initial temperature is 21 degrees Celsius. As for the gasoline, we know that its initial volume is 0.005 cubic meters. The coefficient of volume expansion of gasoline is 950 to the power of negative 6 inverse of degrees in Celsius, and the initial temperature is 21 degrees Celsius. Solving for Tf, we get that the temperature that both the gasoline and the jerry can reach when the container is just beginning to overflow is approximately 3,772 degrees Celsius. So far, we know that materials expand under exposure to heat, but every rule has some sort of exception. This brings us to the thermal expansion of water. Starting from greater than four degrees Celsius to infinitely higher temperatures, water expands, but it also expands between four degrees Celsius and zero degrees Celsius because of the specific nature of the hydrogen bond H2O. Ever wonder where the fish are in a frozen lake? Yes, they are there, and no, they did not freeze. When the surface of the water reaches four degrees Celsius, the point right in between the temperatures that cause it to expand, therefore at its most dense state, it begins to sink. The less dense, warmer water rises to the top, cools, and expands, turning into ice. Ultimately, the ice provides protection for the fish from the extreme temperatures above. 